Hello, and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman. Today we're going to learn to play the melody of a beautiful folk song, which is also a kind of lullaby, All the Pretty Horses. Let's have a listen. With this song, we're actually going to do something special. We're going to learn how to play it as a duet. You may recall from before that a duet is when two people play music together. Today, we'll just learn the melody. And then in our next lesson, I'll also teach you how to play the accompaniment. Find a friend or family member and invite him or her to also learn either the melody or the accompaniment. And then the two of you could play this as a duet. One on the melody, the other on the accompaniment. Now, let's get started learning the melody. Here's the sheet music for All the Pretty Horses. Let's run through our checklist of things we should check before we start playing. We've got a treble clef and bass clef, and we don't have a key signature. You see no sharps or flats here, which tells us we'll be using all white keys. Our time signature is 4-4, four, four, so we know we'll have four beats per measure. Now, Let's take a look at the rhythm of line one. Looking through, we've got quarter notes, half note, no problem. Aha, a dotted quarter note. Let's review what that means. A dotted quarter note equals one and a half beats. So we'll have all of beat one. Beat two happens while we're doing this dot. This dot adds half of a beat to the quarter note. And so then this eighth note will come on the and of beat two. The and is the second half of beat two. So we'll have one, two, and. And then these remaining eighth notes will have three, and. And then we have an eighth note here in the right hand, then an eighth rest. During this eighth rest, the melody passes down to the left hand. So we have four, and. You'll notice that beat four is split between the right hand on the first half of the beat and the left hand on the second half of the beat. So here we have four, and. So the rhythm of this measure is one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Let's practice tapping the rhythm of these two measures while you count the beat. Ready? So say the beat with me and tap the rhythm together. Ready? Go. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, Three, four. One more time. Ready, go. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Great. Let's try the rhythm of the whole line. <clears throat> Let's count the beat out loud. One, two, three, four. And we need the ands here for the eighth notes. Remember, and is the other half of the same beat. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Nice. All right, let's identify the intervals of the melody on this line one. Can you tell me the letter name of these first two notes? If you said A here, you're right. And right here. If you said E, you're correct. A to E would be what interval? It would be a fifth. So we're going up a fifth. Then let's say what the notes are doing from here forward. We have up a fifth, repeat, down a second, which is the same as down a step. Down a second, up a second. Now what interval do you see from here to here? If you said up a fourth, you're correct. Let's keep going. Down a second, down a second, down a second, down a second. 
How about from C, middle C, down to base B? It looks like a big jump, but it's really just down a second because we're switching to bass clef. So middle C, down a second, down a second, repeat. Great, now let's try it out on the piano. All right, let's figure out our position for this song. Where will we place our hands? Start by looking at the first note in the left hand, which is A, and you'll see the number two, which tells us finger number two of the left hand will cover up A, right below middle C. Right hand, what is the first note? We have an E played with finger three. Now, that's how you figure out your position. Because our key signature has no sharps or flats, we know we'll be on all white keys. And our finger ones will actually be right next door to each other. Now, what I'd like you to do is, without my help, see if you can figure out how to play the first two measures of All the Pretty Horses. Press pause and try it a few times on your own, and then press play when you're ready to hear me play it. Okay, here's what you should have played. A, E, E, D, C, D. If that's what it sounded like when you played, then we're good to go on. Otherwise, just rewind, try it a few more times, or press pause to figure it out. Now, let's go on to measure three and four. What note do we start on here in measure three? If you said a G, you're correct. So, finger five of the right hand is on G, so we'll have G, and then stepping down to A, A. One more time, we have one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four. When you practice this, make sure you hold that dotted quarter note long enough. That dot is what gives that note its extra special something. One, two, and three, and four, and if you just go one, ba, 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 it's not exciting. That dot is what gives that note its energy. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Now press pause and work on measures three and four a few times until you feel comfortable, then press play to go on. Great. Now, here's all of line one put together. This time, let's also pay attention to the dynamics. What do you see at the start? That's right, it's a piano mark, which means to play softly. What about in measure three? What do you see there? Yes, a mezzo piano, followed by a decrescendo on the last four eighth notes, meaning we're gonna be bringing the volume back down. So, starting quiet in measure three, a little bump in volume, and then falling back down as the notes go down. Here it is once. I'll play. Starting piano. Now, press pause and work on that line two or three times on your own until you're comfortable, and then we'll go back to the sheet music. All right, let's check out line two. What can you tell me by looking at line two? You probably notice it's the same as line one. Now, not so fast. Did you check every single note? Remember, sometimes music will trick you, but uh -huh, every single note is identical. So I think we're good to go on to line three. All right, let's start with the rhythm of line three. Check it out with me. We have two quarter notes, so let's write in the beats this time. We have one, two, three, four. This half note will get two beats, of course. In your own music, which you can download from our website, it's also nice to write in the beats sometimes. Here we have two eighth notes, so that will be one and, then beat two, then beat three, four on that half note. One and two, three, four another dotted quarter note. Now wait a minute. Do these, notes, do these notes look familiar? If you look carefully, you'll see these are the same notes we had in the second half of lines one and two. So this should be familiar. One, two, and three, and four, and 
My little decrescendo or diminuendo is getting in the way a little bit, but we're okay. One, two, three, four. Let's practice the rhythm by tapping it now. Count the beat with me out loud, please, and tap the rhythm. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. One and two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four. Nice work. Now, we're already going to know how to play this, so let's check out these notes here. Can you tell me all the letter names from here to here? Try it on your own, and then I'll tell you if you got it right. Your turn, go. If you said E, G, G, A, A, C, C, you are correct. Let's try to play it on the piano. All right, our hands are still in the same position as before for line three. We said that the left hand was going to be starting on an E, so can you tell me which finger number is on E for the left hand? If you said five, you're correct. So we have finger five, and then it skips up to G, three, three, I was singing the finger numbers there. Now you try. Good, this time let's sing the letter names. Can you try it with me? Starting finger five on E, go. E, G, G. Good, now let's look at the next measure. We have two A's played by the left hand and their eighth notes, so one and, and then the right hand goes C, C. Together it will be one and two, three, four. Now your turn. Good, now let's put those two measures together. My turn once. One, two, three, four. One and two, three, four. Now your turn. Great, now let's try the whole line and put it all together. Will you try playing it along with me? Let's try it at the same time. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. One and two, three, four. Now up to G. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four. If that was a little bumpy, that's fine. Just pause, practice it a few times on your own, then rewind and try it again with me. If you're ready to go on, then just keep watching. All right, what can you tell me about line four? You'll probably notice, once again, the notes are the exact same as lines one and two. One slight change, however, is with the dynamics. You'll notice that we have this diminuendo or decrescendo here, which leads us to a pianissimo. So the song will end at its quietest dynamic level here at the end. Remember, this is a lullaby, so you might be helping someone to fall asleep. So we want to end softly. All right, it's time to try the whole piece from the beginning. I'm going to play it, and if you'd like to play along with me, you can. Or if you'd rather just listen, that's fine too. Let's pay a special attention both to the rhythms, like those dotted quarter notes, but also to the dynamics. You'll notice when we get to line three, the dynamics are going to bump up to mezzo piano, but then once again, like all the other lines, there'll be a decrescendo near the end. Let's try it from the beginning. I'll count four beats and then we start. One, two, three, four. Nice work learning the melody of all the pretty horses. 
Remember to work on finding a friend to learn either the melody or accompaniment so the two of you can play a duet together. In our next lesson, we'll learn the accompaniment. Happy practicing and see you next time. Baby, come down, it's nap time! Ride, horsey!